Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. For anyone who doesn't know who I am, I'm a UK based consultant audiologist and clinical ear care specialist. I'm also the founder and director of a company called Clearwax. Clearwax are the manufacturers and developers of the wireless eye clearscope endoscope device that we're using to perform and, and record the procedure. Clearwax also train qualified ear professionals internationally in endoscopic ear care. And if you are based in the UK and you're suffering from a blocked ear and would like to arrange an appointment with one of our Clearwax specialists, please do visit our website, which is www.clearwax.co.uk. This is a very interesting case. A client uh, booked in last week in sheer desperation for help. Um, they've been suffering from severe otalgia. So otalgia is the medical name for earache and reduced hearing for several weeks in the left ear. They visited a couple of ear specialists on the high street to try and have their ears, um, the blockage removed. Unfortunately, on both occasions, they weren't able to remove the blockage and they advised the patient that they felt they, she had a foreign body in the ear. As a result, the client uh, visited their local walk-in centre. Due to the pandemic, it's a bit difficult for clients to visit their own GP at the moment, depending upon your geographical location in the UK and the local policy on seeing patients face-to-face. -face. However, there are emergency walk-in centres where there are centres which um, house um, general practitioners and nurses. They're not your own registered GP or nurse, but they are open to the public in emergencies. Similar to um, an accident and emergency um, at your local hospital, but not obviously for life and death cases such as um, A&E. Um, they attempted to remove it, but said they'd be best actually going to A&E um, if there is a foreign body. They weren't themselves sure what, what was causing the blockage. The patient then went to A&E. Um, A&E are not ear specialists, so they're not trained per se to deal with ear, ear wax removal blockages, but the patient advised they tried to remove uh, the blockage and it caused them severe pain. So um, they were advised by accident emergency to request their GP to arrange an outpatient ENT appointment so they can see an ENT specialist and in the meantime use some ear wax drops. That will take months. Uh, the patient's friend, who's actually a dentist, came across my YouTube channel and advised the patient to book an appointment with myself uh, and hence the, patient's, uh, the patient attended. So just thought I'd give you that backdrop so it's a um, good place to start. So started off using a Zolna suction probe. I kind of figured really early on that this is not earwax, this is keratosis obturans. Keratosis obturans can have the appearance of earwax. You can see it right now it, to the untrained eye. So even when I first started, it was very difficult to differentiate between keratosis obturans and earwax because it's got the similar color, similar complexion. However, the texture of it is completely different. It's springy, it's coiled, it's skins of ribbon that um, have shedded from the ear canal but hasn't migrated. And this dead skin, eventually it coils up because it's not migrating from the ear and you get another layer of skin and another layer of skin. And these skins uh, coil and uh, take up a ribbon appearance and they completely block the ear eventually um, and it's such a hard thing to remove because this skin is adhered to the canal wall. Um, you can just see, you can actually just visually see all the skin ribbons there when I'm removing this using a Jobson horn. Uh, you've got different layers, so the fresher layers of skin are lighter in complexion, the darker layers of skin are the skin layers that have been in the ear for a lot longer. Um, so you generally find the, the, sh the lighter skin, um, so the fresher layers of skin around the perimeter, around the outside of the plug, and the darker, older skin layers more in the core and the centre because they've oxidised. So I'm just using a combination of hot, uh, all the micro instruments at my disposal. We're using a bit of suction, we're using forceps, we're using an ear hook, we're using a Jobson horn. Um, it did help that this patient had been using some sodium bicarbonate earwax drops, which is the best type of drops if you have got keratosis obturans. Um, I find that if you use olive oil, which is what I normally recommend to my patients, 
if you have got dead skin or keratosis obturans, it's not that uh, beneficial to the patient and it doesn't really make the procedure any easier. Whereas sodium bicarbonate drops for this type of um, procedure really does help. It helps to loosen the skin adhesions from um, the ear canal, which is so imperative when you're removing keratosis obturans. So you can just see, uh, just using some forceps at the moment, trying to get a grip, just pulling out these coils of dead, dead skin plugs out of the ear. With cases of keratosis obturans, it's, it can be quite shocking how much debris we remove and that's because the skin, as it coils, it compresses, which means there's a lot more space in the ear canal than if it was for hard wax, for example. So because these layers of dead skin have compressed and coiled, uh, it's possible to really get a big haul of um, dead skin plugs out of the ear. You can see this fresher layer of skin, as I've referred to earlier, on the outer perimeter coating the main plug of dead skin in the core. And so, as I said, the fresher layer of skin, it hasn't yet oxidised, so it's white in appearance. With this dead skin keratin that's called, it has a lot of kinetic energy, so it's springy. Um, as I said earlier at the beginning of the video, removing keratosis obturans can be quite difficult for that reason, or well, for two reasons. It's adhered to the canal wall and it has this springy effect because of all that coil spring, all that kinetic energy. So you're pulling at this and then it kind of springs back, it tries, it calls back inwards. Uh, so just using the forceps, another huge plug of dead keratin I removed. Keratosis obturans, because of the skin, if it's been in there for too long, it can become infected and it can start eroding the ear canal itself. And you'll see with this particular patient, she had a widened and eroded annulus region of her ear canal. So the annulus is near the base of the eardrum, so it's deep in the ear, so it's medial. So there's just another big ribbon of dead skin. And it's at the base, so it's at the bottom of the ear canal, uh, on the bony part, and you'll see it's become really widened um, and exposed. So this patient will now, because of that, get a, um, a chronic buildup of dead skin in this, in this kind of cave that's corroded in this widening and erosion. So when you've got a trench or widening or, um, uh, as I said, um, an erosion of the ear canal, uh, it makes it more difficult for skin or earwax to naturally migrate so it can collect um, in that crater um, which is going to possibly be the case for this patient moving forward so after the procedure I've advised the patient to attend annually in the first instance so we're just near the eardrum now so it's very difficult to um, ascertain whereabouts we are in the ear canal because it's all very white all this dead skin we don't know whether the region right in the distance is another plug of dead skin or is it the eardrum and some skin attached to it but I can just see through some of this dead keratin and I know now that I'm in um, I, I'm working directly on the eardrum but it, the eardrum is completely hidden away by a thick layer of dead keratin now it's, it's impossible I just advise you um, I'm, I don't manage to remove all of this uh, it was really adhered However, even at this stage, the patient's symptoms had been completely alleviated. They, that pain had completely gone. It was almost like a light switch moment when I removed uh, one of the last, latter plugs of keratin. Instantly, they felt relieved of their symptoms. The hearing had come back, it was completely restored. So the idea now, I just want to try and remove as, as much keratin off the eardrum as safely as possible without causing any injury or trauma to the ear canal or um, to the eardrum itself. Because we're working deep in the ear, the deeper part of the ear canal is very sensitive, so the inner two thirds of the ear canal, it's made up of bone and a very thin layer of skin that's lining the bone. That layer of skin is 0.1 millimeters, so it's a very delicate layer of skin. Whereas the outer third, uh, it's a flexible part of the ear canal, it's made up of cartilage and some muscle and fatty tissue and the skin there is a lot thicker, in fact it's 10 times thicker, it's about a millimetre in thickness. So 
just as a general rule of thumb, um, just so you can understand the ear anatomy, the outer third of the ear canal is flexible, it's semi-sensitive, um, so it means you can put a bit of pressure in there, it's malleable, whereas the inner two thirds, it's non-flexible and it's very sensitive. So whenever we work uh, near to uh, the eardrum and in the inner two thirds, we have to be very gentle. Also, when we work on the eardrum itself, now the eardrum is also, as I said, it's a very thin membrane. It's wafer thin, it's a millimeter in thickness. So we've got to be really careful. Uh, it's that trade-off. We want to remove as much dead skin and keratin that we can from the ear canal and off the eardrum, but without causing any injury or trauma uh, to the patient. So I'm just on the anterior canal wall, which is the front part of the, the ear canal. Um, so this is facing towards the patient's nose, with it, with it being the left, uh, left eardrum and left ear canal. And you can see I'm just gently peeling this off. Again, we're just going to make sure I don't make contact with the bony part of the ear canal because that can um, abrase the ear canal, uh, cut into the, the thin, delicate skin layer, causing infection. This is the annulus region. So this, if you remember earlier, I was saying that the patient's got a widened and eroded, uh, eroded annulus, and th this is that part, the base of the eardrum, right dead center of the eardrum where the hammer bone is, the malleus. There's this hard crusted piece of dead keratin there. You can see. I just went towards it there for a moment, and I'm just using a fine end gorge now. Um, and not as standard zona suction probe. So a fine end is a, an extension to the zona suction probe. It's a, like a little needle. We attach it um, to the end of the zona suction probe. And the fine end, it, it's less traumatic. So if we do come in contact with the eardrum or the ear canal, it's not gonna cause as much trauma. Um, and I use it more for pre uh, precision work. You can see we've got a thick layer of dead keratin there. And it's also a lot less noisy. Um, I mean, suction is very noisy. Um, the noise itself can sometimes cause temporary or even permanent hearing loss. So uh, we've got to be also careful in terms of duration of how long we're in the ear. But with a fine end, it reduces the noise levels. Um, and also it helps to reduce uh, the chance of um, the, the chloric effect. So again, just remove the thin layer of dead keratin on the roof of the ear canal there, using the fine end. So the chloric effect is when we, so the balance of organ, uh, which is, uh, we call that the vestibular system, it's made up of three semicircle canals. Um, and they're in the inner ear and they can be affected by temperature and pressure. When we vacuum the ear, it reduces the temperature of the ear canal which inhibits the balance organ in this particular ear so the patient's right ear the, the contralateral ear the opposite ear we're not performing a procedure in there so the temperature of that ear is the normal temperature in this ear we've actually reduced the ear temperature by suctioning in the ear so this balance organ in comparison to the patient's right balance organ is inhibited. So when we reduce the temperature, it, it inhibits, it reduces the function of the balance organ. When we increase the temperature, it actually excites the balance organ. So therefore, the brain, this patient's brain is receiving normal messages from the patient's right ear, but reduced messages from the patient's left organ of balance. Therefore, the brain actually thinks this patient is moving because it's getting these different conflicting messages. However, the patient's not moving. Therefore, the brain is tricked um, into thinking it's moving and therefore the, you can suffer from uh, vertigo. And that's when the eyes try to correct the brain um, and tell the brain that don't trust the ears. The ears are not giving you the correct information. We, the patient is not moving. Believe me, uh, I know what I'm talking about. I'm overriding the, my eyes are overriding the balance organ. And people as a result suffer from the chloric effect. And it's a, a, it's a horrible sensation where the room violently spins around. People can also feel sick. So the fine end reduces the likelihood of developing the chloric effect. So again, just working on the eardrum, we can see a lot more of the eardrum now. We can see this is the posterior quadrant, so the posterior 
part of the eardrum is the back part and we and is it that thick layer of skin you can see I was gently peeling it directly off the eardrum you need a really steady hand, hand for there uh, one false move and we've perforated that patient's eardrum again she's got a thick layer of keratin on the, the top part of the what we call the superior quadrant so you can separate um, the eardrum into quadrants so into four so you've got the top part so the north region which is called the superior quadrant we've got the south region of the eardrum which we call the posterior quadrant you've got the back part uh, of the eardrum to the rear which is the posterior to the right rear posterior quadrant and we've got the front quarter of the eardrum um, and we call that the anterior so here we're more centrally on the eardrum and again just delicately with the fine end you can see I'm just slowly trying to peel this off. At this stage I was reluctant to put any further sodium bicarbonate drops in because sometimes with the sodium bicarb it can really thin, uh, cause this dead skin to become really thin and it just tears off in little pieces. The idea is at this stage I wanted to see whether I can get a grip onto this dead keratin and peel it off in a thick mass um, but it's very difficult as I said I'm not going to get all of this out I'm actually very happy uh, with where we are with this patient the patient can completely hear this remaining piece of dead keratin would naturally shed now because the dead skin plugs that was previously in front of it and compressed against against it was no is no longer there which will allow this dead skin to naturally migrate off the eardrum so I'm just mopping up near the entrance using a normal zonal suction probe. In a moment, I am going to put some sodium bicarbonate drops in just to give it one last go because I did try my best to peel it without using the drops because, as I said, I wanted it to be in place. I wanted to peel it off in a thick, continuous layer. Remember, we're not. This is not stripping wallpaper, guys. Um, so. I know some the, some viewers are going to be absolutely fuming that I didn't manage to remove the rest, which is fine. I can't, I can't uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do the best I can and um, and do what's right by the patient. So I'm just going back in, just use some sodium bicarbonate drops to see if this could just loosen this last piece of dead skin. That's more anterior now, so the posterior part of the can ask completely visible that's fine I and mean, then sometimes when we use drops you get some uh, it does blare up a bit again just kissing this you can see the eardrum move there so again we're going to be really gentle so as i'm trying to remove this last piece of keratin uh, the skin because it's it is quite embedded and adhered to the eardrum you're making you're, when i'm pulling this dead keratin off it's also causing the eardrum to vibrate so just going to be really gentle here So just kissing the surface um, and I think I've left it as that so I'm really pleased with what we've done that's all the dead skin plugs on a tissue all the instrumentation we use there's a sodium bicarbonate drops also that I used during the procedure now we weighed this as well guys uh, or you can imagine that 571 milligrams of dead skin blocked in your ear that's a, a tremendous amount of dead skin uh, patient felt a lot lighter uh, after the procedure. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video guys. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and safe and hopefully I'll upload some new videos during the course of the week. Take care. Bye.